Hi YouTube, here's a video of something that you don't see all too often. This is a video review of the SAWK001 case called this 6M13-7000, a precise dress watch. It's from the Age of Discovery line of watches and it's effectively known as Dancing Hands due to some properties of the movement that we're going to see during the following few minutes. This dress was I found on the Seiko catalog back in 1993, although the case indicates that it was manufactured in November 1991. So I guess this is one of the earliest examples. Back then this was a flagship watch of that now uh, still going line, there are still some pretty nifty precise watches out there. Precise was always signifying a dress watch with a twist. Now this particular certainly has a lot of twists. This is a perpetual calendar watch with the dual alarm function and a very interesting calendar search feature in which you are able to check any date from January 1st, 1400 AD to December 31st, 2499 AD and this watch will return you the correct day for that date. Of course, it will keep a perpetual calendar up to 2500. There is also a daily alarm feature and an alarm set on any day of the week, of any month, of any year. This is all pretty impressive stuff for the times, 1991. And this watch retailed back then for 48,000 yen in 1993. I don't know if it was even more expensive back in 1991. To put this into perspective, back then 60,000 yen would get you a quartz tuna. So yes, this was a very impressive and pretty expensive dresser watch. It was the top of the line of the precise back then. There are four pushers, two in each side of the case, and the crown with a lovely carbohorn. I guess it must be synthetic. The bezel is non-rotating. It's only used to signify the month in the perpetual calendar. The watch itself is pretty thin, that's the benefit of the quartz movement. It's about 10 millimeters thick. The case, not including the crown, is 37 millimeters wide across. It's pretty long though, lug to lug it's 43 millimeters. And the lug size is a very strange 17 millimeters. <coughs> Sorry. Now the watch pretty much exudes quality. You can see the level of detail on the dial, plus there is sort of a nice um, texture on the dial, sort of like, you know, sprinkled silver dust on there. One of the nicer precise dials. It's refreshing to see that Seiko is beginning to put some thought and effort into the dials of the mid-range watches again. This was the norm back in the 90s, where we will see some pretty impressive dials, this being one of them. And lately Seiko is again, in, is again beginning to put some dazzle back into the dials of the mid-range watches. There are a few precise watches coming out right now that are pretty impressive looking. Now, being quartz, of course, it's much easier to make complications like that. I'm not sure if any mechanical watch could actually put up with this level of uh, calendar complication, which certainly cost an arm and a leg if it did. And I found this watch, you know, left in a drawer somewhere in Japan, and it just needed a fresh battery. 
and everything appears to be working in order. Now let's see why it's called Dancing Hanks. As you can see in this sub-dial right here, this sub-dial is where all the features of the watch are being controlled. Well, so what you do is you turn the crown clockwise or counterclockwise and the feature you chose gets to be installed. So now, first of all, in order to set the watch, you need to set all the hands back to zero. And this is the last feature over here, the match feature. Let's turn it over there and see what happens. Take a look at the hands as I do this. Yep. Everything lines up. This is essential if you actually want to set the calendar straight. And from then on, you can move once you have all the hands nicely lined up like that. The subdial here denotes AM and PM time. You switch to calendar mode, which is the one exactly to the left of the timer. And let's see how you can see the date in this watch right here. Now, as you see this red tip on the minute hand, this signifies the two last digits of the year. So now, it's pretty hard to make out because these are all super fine and right. So, this is all very super fine, of course, but this red tip right here signifies 17, the last two digits of the year. The, that was a minute hand, the hour hand, the reverse tip right here signifies the month. So we have the 12th month of the 2017 year. The date, of course, is the 18th. And the second hand index, the reverse side, signifies the date. So it's Monday, the 18th of the 12th month of the two year 2017. Switch it back. Time view, and everything just dances back into position. The second hand jumping right to the time. It's pretty nifty. There's also a one day alarm feature, which you know you choose again one of the dates and calendar setting, and a daily alarm feature. I filmed this one earlier with an example of a daily alarm. As you can see, the details are pretty small and it's very hard for me to set the watch correctly while filming it, so I won't be attempting to set the alarm or try to find the particular day in the calendar because, quite frankly, my eyesight is not really up to that. It's pretty tormenting if you are a little bit over the hill. I guess a younger lad would be fine, find it much easier. So there it is. The dancing hanks is all this exciting stuff going around when you switch from modes to modes. There's usually also a demonstration mode in these movements. This being one of the first movements that featured all this crazy going to and back. And one of the most, you know, the higher quality build ones. Because there's a lot of quality in here. I mean, look at those hands. They are part blue, part blue, part, you know, gold. The dial, of course, is pretty amazing against the light. My photography doesn't do it justice. The font, the calligraphy here, the typeset, it's all top notch. The pusher's retro, very nice. The crown, as I said, with its little artificial jewel, the bracelet, very nice bracelet, typical 90s style, might remind you of the Tag Heuer bracelets at the time. The watch is also anti-magnetic, up to 60 gauss, the entire movement. When I opened it up to fit a new battery, it was magnetically sealed against interference, very nice, nicely brushed case back. It's not a screw back case and the crown doesn't screw down. 
but it still has a pretty decent rating of 100 meters water resistance. More than enough for a dress watch. Overall, I'd say it's a very nicely built watch that it will stood the test of time really well. It works perfectly. Now the bracelet looks a little bit too much on the funky side and you'd have a hard, hard time finding an appropriate strap with 17 millimeters, but the whole, you know, it kind of works. And it works pretty well on the wrist, much better than you would expect really from a watch that's, you know, only 37 millimeter case. But I guess that's pretty appropriate for a dress watch. The case finish looks like big blasted stuff. It doesn't, it looks like titanium this whole watch being, you know, on the gray side, but it's not, it's stainless steel. It's just the finishing, it's a pretty, it's a very nice finishing reminiscent of bead blasting. And certainly you get a lot of quality for the money that this watch costs, I'd say, given the rarity of the movement, that it was a pretty good deal back then. During the 90s, these are of course pretty hard to get right now, especially in a good working order. Usually the alarm sets won't work, or you'd have trouble, you know, resetting all the hangs back to zero, stuff like that. Plus, it's pretty hard to actually, you know, set this watch properly. I had, uh, I was very fortunate to find a scan of the original manual up online. And I still had a hard time, you know, uh, setting the time. I even took it to a watchmaker to complain that this pusher wouldn't work, but in fact it did work. I just hadn't set the crown upright, uh, yeah, full. Anyway, so everything turned well, and that's a very unique-looking design. So let's take a look at that on the wrist. And here it is on my wrist. My wrist is 18.5 centimeters in circumference, or seven and a quarter inches. So as you can get a feel of that. And I'd say it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. It wears larger than you thought it would due to the pussers. And also the small bracelet kind of accentuates the size of the case. Makes it even look a little bit larger than it actually is. The dial looks very interesting. Looks pretty, pretty hard to photograph, really, and to, you know, film. But the quality is definitely there. It's a very well built quartz complication watch. And they don't make a lot of those anymore. I mean, the Japanese still have, you know, a thing for those. You can check out the Campagnola line from Citizen. It's pretty reminiscent of this stuff. They love their complications, they're in Citizen. But I don't think Seiko really does this thing anymore. A little bit more focused on the GPS solar stuff and less on their usual I would say more reliable, really, quartz. Because this watch just sprang into action with a simple battery and doesn't require any attention or anything. So I guess it's an ideal dress watch. So there you have it, an interesting find. I thought I would share. I would I will try to set up a small show of how the daily alarm sounds. After that, let's see if I can make it. And this was the one day, the daily, I'm sorry, the daily alarm.